right, so we're the small local race here in Perigold, Arkansas. They probably have maybe 70 people in it total. Uh, so I wanted to get, kind of give a quick overview of our setup, and this time I'm going to try to focus more on the hardware side. Um, so we've got these cones. I don't know where my head timer bought those, uh, but the cones and ribbons he purchased himself. Uh, but the rest of the equipment, um, now these mats are just 3x3 three three mats you can buy at Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever, and they just are there just to simply cover the cables. Um, looks like we ran three antenna cables under the mats. These are the thicker, either 40 or 50 foot long cables. And then we got one power cord that looks like he is putting the clock on that side instead of uh, over here on the right side. And so uh, I got three cables going under there. We've got our um, TR200 antenna right there. And then our FX9500 antenna or 7400, whichever reader you're using. So uh, we put the main reader's uh, antennas first because, you know, obviously that's the most important. That's going to you should have no problem picking everyone up. should be no problem with it staying connected and doing everything it's supposed to do. But if it were to fail for any reason at all, we want our backup antenna right there at the finish line. Now, some people that know a little bit about RFID may wonder about tag confusion. And uh, the what I've heard is the, the TR200, you know, that pushes a lot, a lot less power out of the antenna than the main reader, right? So the main reader supposedly kind of floods out the TR200 antenna. So there's not really a problem with tag confusion. Uh, and even if there is... Uh, um, what I've noticed, even whenever I do have two powerful readers working on the finish line with the antennas side by side, you know, really, you might find that instead of picking the tag up, you know, a few hundred times a second, it may only get it, um, you know, 20 or 30 less time. I mean, it's a smaller percentage um, of reads you'll get, but I mean, really, all you need is one reader coming through. So if you had two readers connected to your finish line, maybe both connected to different laptops, um, you'll see that it should get everyone no problem. Um, so really, tag confusion is not really a big deal. Um, again, considering that we only need one read out of each system. And so, uh, let's see here. So we got our main reader. Now, again, I like to put it down here on the ground, in the shade, of course, um, so that we don't have any worry about it possibly falling off the table uh, and hitting the ground. So it's there. This is it's really cool concrete. Uh, you could even, now these are designed to go, you know, on a wall. So if you wanted to, you can prop it up sideways if you're worried about getting air all around it. But um, the reader does just fine there. We've got our TR200 over there. It's also in the shade. Uh, this doesn't really generate a lot of heat, so it's, it's, it's fine. I mean, you don't, want to, you don't want to put it out in the sunlight um, with really hot concrete. But, I mean, right there, it's going to be perfectly fine. we got a little plunger thing here for our backup system. Of course, we have our camera, which is connected to the RFID system. Now, it really doesn't matter which ca uh, which computer you hook it up to, because you know if a tag is missed for any reason, then if you hook it up to your manual system, well, then that will capture uh, the picture. But if you, um, hey, Avery Aaron, Avery Aaron, quiet. If you hook it up to your RFID system, and then you know, let's say your manual guy forgets to hit the button by accident. I mean, you really, it's, it's the best thing. Now, if you're at a large race, I usually hook a camera up to each laptop. That way, I've got uh, you know, two photos of every person, and um, so that's, that's one thing you can do. But and you can find those cameras on uh, different websites, um, oh, uh, like Amazon or uh, oh, what's the other one? Um, I can't think of the other site there. It'll come to me in a little while. But you can find those for sometimes three hundred dollars or less. Uh, you know, just the camera and the body and uh, the battery and everything you need. But and then we have our forty-two inch LED TV. Um, Again, this is just a cheap TV I bought at Sam's Club for maybe 350 or so. Uh, and I'm sure they're even cheaper now. Um, but anyways, uh, this is all we need it for is just to display a, a white and black clock with, you know, the name down below it. And so, you know, you don't need some super fancy, um, uh, you know, 120 hertz TV or whatever. Just a basic TV is fine. And so we will see whenever that's on that it, it looks great. So, uh, and then, of course, we have our power coming from the building over here to our power strip and then the battery, battery backup is plugged into the power strip and the only thing that would be on the reader side um, during the race is the reader so um, anyways that's, that's our whole setup